So understanding how industries are classified and why are the factors affecting localization of industries so important. To begin with, we see why industries have been so important. The first reason is they definitely provide a source of employment. Now they don't just only provide employment, but they also help in generating the national income. So they are the drivers of the Indian of the national economy, be it any nation that we focus and they contribute to the development of that nation. So industries are definitely an essential component. Now why industries are used? Uh, any product which converts from the primary sector and is being utilized has to go through certain processing and this processing undergoes through industries. For example, let's say we have any uh, agriculture material which is available. We take a simple example, cotton. Now this cotton undergoes a process and it turns into a textile. Now this process is happening through the industries and therefore industries are essential. To begin with, we would first understand how industries can be classified. Now industries can be classified on numerous bases. It can be on the basis of size, it can be on the basis of investment, ownership, the kind of products which are used in the industry and uh, so on and so forth. So today we would first understand some of the basic classifications and then we would understand the factors affecting the location of industry. So based on ownership, it can be either a public industry, private industry or a cooperative industry. A move is an excellent example of cooperative industry where people come together and work as a unit. Public industry is an industry which is controlled and funded by the government. However, private is under a private control. So uh, the industries which are meant for strategic purpose, defense, security are mostly in the public sector, not just in India, but across the globe. That's a common phenomena that we witness. The next is the classification based on the use of product. Now it's very important to understand this is how we write our answers. Let's say you have a question on understanding the types of industries. We don't just put that, okay, there is a large scale industry, small scale, medium scale, private, joint, but we rather classify it and subclassify it. That makes the content much more systematic. So here, based on the use of product, the industry can be called as a basic good industry, capital good industry, intermediate and consumer. Now, consumer goods. Now, what are the differences? Basic good industry is an industry that manufactures the basic material. I want to establish an industry. Now, for that industry, I would require machinery, manufacturing plants. What are those? Those are basic goods which are required for the functioning of the industry. And they therefore, they are called as the basic goods. The next is capital goods. Capital goods are the assets, the building, the machinery, the tools, the vehicles, all these are capital goods. So they are, uh, they are there for a prolonged period of time and uh, they do not make the finished good. They are actually used in the process of making the finished good. Then the intermediate goods which are produced in the process of uh, processing. And finally, the consumer goods which are used by the consumers, for example, clothing, food. So all those are consumer goods. Now the industries pursuing in those sectors are called as the consumer good industry. The next good classification is based on raw material. I can say an industry which relies on agriculture based products would be called as agro-based agro industry or agriculture based industry. Cotton textile is a good example. We have mineral based industry where we have iron and steel as a good example. Raw material based industry which is based on raw material. Uh, now raw material could again be from agriculture, from mining. So it's the, the location that we would understand later is closer to the raw material. Then we do have forest based industry where we have uh, produ products from forest which are used in the process of industry. For example, manufacturing and selling of honey is a forest based industry. Now it could be small scale, large scale or medium scale based on the size. Based on the nature of products, we have eight further classification. It can be either metallurgical industries, 
uh, which are used in the manufacturing of metals mechanical engineering industries chemical engineering which are mainly allied to pharmaceuticals and the chemical compounds used for uh, various purposes textile which is cotton textile food processing which is again the agro based industry electricity generation electronics and communication industries so that's another classification based on the nature of product now coming on to the factors of location of an industry now again this is a very very interesting and an important topic to understand in the higher classes as we go we would understand a model which is known as weber's theory for industrial location one of the most common and popular theories under industrial location but we do have other scientists and other geographers as well who have laid down the localization theory but what was so unique about the weber's theory was the location triangle and this triangle talked about where the industry would be if there are raw material and finished product now the industry where raw material is heavy in that case the industry would be close to the raw material for example iron and steel uses lots of iron lots of uh, coal which is bulky to transport and therefore the industry would be most probably near raw material for example we have textile industry now cloth uh, being manufactured from cotton now once you have the cotton yarn with you uh, where could you have the cotton textile industry probably close to the market so you would have better reach better availability now industries which are weight losing uh, weight losing that means they lose weight in the process of manufacturing for example iron steel uh, sugar cane industry paper and pulp industry all those weight losing industries are located close to the source of raw material so as i said iron and steel industry is a good example paper and pulp industry sugar cane industry sugar being bulky to transport all those are located close to the source of raw material now <clears throat> for iron and steel we would have a separate case study but to understand that uh, for optimum use they are located close to not only the iron fields but also the coal fields major coal fields in india are in bokaro durgapur then we have iron ore from badravati raulkela uh, bilai so the industries would be closer to those locations market as we said heavy machine tools uh, anything which is non weight losing so weight losing would be close to market non weight losing would be uh, close to market area clear the next is power for example uh, aluminium industry we have synthetic nitrogen industry both of those industries are closer to the source of power because they require huge amount of energy in them uh, in the processing and therefore aluminium and synthetic nitrogen are two typical industries located close to power the next is transport industry now uh, uh, location because of transport now we do understand that transport is a bigger cost so if the cost of transport is too much then it would definitely have an impact on the final product so we ensure that the cost is remained optimum so that the product price which is finally there after processing is not extremely high similarly labor cheap labor is one of the factors which decide the localization of industry government over the years gave numerous incentives to establish industries in the remote and the tribal pockets and one good advantage of it was cheap labor which was available the next is historical factors for example surat vadoda murshidabad coimbatore kozhikode mysore these were some of the historical areas now during the phase of colonialism these were the areas where rapid expansion is started and this also led to discriminatory policies during the colonial time which eventually led to establishment and uh, more flourishing more uh, more industries which could flourish in those areas the next is industrial policy for example establishment of plants at bilai raulkela are the decisions to actually uh um, uh strengthen the tribal pockets in india and government's incentive to provide support to the tribal regions was an idea through the various industrial policies so industrial policy definitely is a important factor in localization of industry now this 
द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एंड फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द लोकलाइजेशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज आर एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड बिफोर वी प्रोसीड विद द इंडिविजुअल इंडस्ट्रीज इन ऑल मीन्स